Well, hey guys, welcome back to 42 Pros. And in this video, we're gonna talk about pairing up the Tamron 35 to 150 and the 6600. If you haven't seen my first impression video on this lens, short and sweet, it's a great lens. It's phenomenal, I love it. The image quality, the sharpness, all that fun stuff, yes. The contrast you get throughout the whole frame of the glass, hmm good stuff so if you hadn't seen it definitely check it out i'll put it in the cards or at the end of the video but when you pair it up with the 6600 it's still great <laughs> long and short it's still great it's a great lens okay um but as you put it on there the handling of the camera body and the lens is pretty good okay uh, with this deeper grip on the 6600 because of the z100 battery uh, yeah, it, that is needed. Now, if you had a 6400, I don't know, because that's a shallower grip. I don't know how that would feel, but with the 6600 specifically, yeah, it feels really good. Now, granted, I'm 6'4", six, uh, six, I have big old hands, um, and I do use a cage on my camera, so it gives me that extra little pinky lip there. That feels pretty good. Okay, but if you didn't have it and you only had the, the camera itself and you shot a lot of photography work like this, that would probably get tiring over time because again, this lens has some junk in the trunk. It's, it's weighty. You got them big elements in there. I mean, it's a big glass. I mean, F2 to F2.8 at that focal range is, mm, it's, it's got some junk in there. It's, it's hefty, okay? But if you're a conventional photographer where you, you get multiple points of contact, use your viewfinder, all that fun stuff, you will find that this has a really, really good balance to it. Would I still recommend a good uh, carrying system like a Peak Design, you know, you know, harness or something or strap or even one of their cuffs? Yes, because again, there's some weight here. Okay, you gotta be careful with it. With the photography world, okay? I can't remember if I mentioned this on the first impression video, but <clears throat> these programmable buttons are in very, very good locations, okay? As you can see, I just put my hands right on the lens. I'm fixing to shoot right here. Focus hold or whatever you want to change it to, that button is right there. You go to portrait mode and then both of them, they're right there, okay? I love that part about this lens. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, placement of the buttons there, okay? But again, the handling is very, very good. The grip itself for me is almost ideal, almost perfect. But as you can see, it's a little bit tight when I put my big old hands in there, okay? Little bit tight, not overly tight, because you know, as I work and everything and move around and hold it and whatnot, it doesn't rub too much, but it does rub just a little bit. So if you have larger fingers or larger hands, really large hands, and, and or if you have uh, swelling issues in your hands due to weather conditions, that's something to think about if you have this camera and this uh, lens combination because that is fairly tight in there but for me it gives me that extra sense of security you know like i got a really good grip especially when i have the cage on there and i got the extra lip so i've got a good pinky placement there that feels good to me okay but again it's kind of personal preference if you're smaller in stature and you have smaller hands that this could probably get a little fatiguing over time. But handling otherwise is pretty good. The balance of it, even out there, for me, feels good, okay? It's not too top heavy, but it is very noticeable. This is a small rig cage, and I'll put the, uh, the model number on the screen for you. This is almost an absolute necessity for me, and here's why. A lot of my cameras is primarily video cameras, okay? Now, with that, that comes fluid head tripods, okay? And with this setup specifically, you can see it's not, it's rocking back a little bit, but without the cage, I cannot mount this to a tripod, okay? And here's why, okay? As you can see, the cage itself actually gives me about a quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths of clearance further than the camera body gives me, okay? So it's, it, it makes it taller. And as you can see here, the collar, okay, the bevel on the collar 
it extends wider and taller than the extra ca the actual camera body okay the cage also gives me good protection but for me the primary reason is in order to put it on a tripod head i've got to have a cage okay so if you do a lot of video work plan on going ahead and get you a cage for multiple reasons but specifically you got to have this height this extra height in order to mount the plate on it so you get clearance from the lens itself because it's, it's a thick lens you know it's got some junk like i mentioned now if you have like quick release systems might not be an issue for you at all because you can you can snap it in uh, like arca swiss or even some of the manfrotto things that you can uh, get and uh, uh, attach to your cameras they have smaller plates but i typically use some of the bigger plates the five inch or six inch plates because of the counterbalance seven systems that i have in my fluid heads okay now as far as um, the performance of the lens of photography or video world on, on this camera specifically in the photography world i hadn't seen any issues whatsoever it performs very well very snappy with the autofocus and it's still really sharp now here recently as you'll see in these clips I have noticed that the, the vocal balls do have a little busyness in there, but it's not a deal breaker for me. It's still extremely sharp. gives me good contrast throughout the whole frame, especially now being on the APS-C body. Um, and it, it, I don't know, the warmth, it's just a good image. To me, my eyes, what I look at, what I'm looking for, it looks really good with this camera setup, okay? <clears throat> now, with the video world, same thing. Video performance, yeah, really, really good, especially in really good lighting situations. I did run into one situation here recently. I was filming some stuff for my church just to get some B-roll stuff for our website and social media posts and whatnot. And I was running a couple different cameras, capturing some photos, some videos, different angles. So I was running my wide angle lens on one of my full frame lens, uh, cameras and i had this set up exactly just like this nothing else just sitting there just like this <clears throat> as i was going back and forth i would just leave the camera on didn't matter if i had it in my hand or not i just leave it on so i could just snap it get it back up here and start working okay the ledge i had this camera sitting on was about a foot and a half away from one of our support beams in our sanctuary now since I had it in video mode and since I had it on continuous autofocus, it was pointing at something that was really close to it, okay? This is not one of those typical Tamron lenses where you almost get macro performance out of it, okay? So it was trying to hunt for that closest subject, you know, that closest uh, uh, thing that was in its field of view. So when I switched to the, back to this one to get something at distance all the way across the sanctuary and I zoomed, it was still at that very, very tight focal plane. And so it took it a second in order for it to really work and move all those elements and acquire what I was looking for, okay? I actually even had to give it a little focus assist by half pressing the shutter button. And once I did that, everything was good. So something to think about, if you have to do some extreme focal plane changes, you might run into this, so just be ready for it. All in all, that's the only issue that I have come in contact with other than the backlit subjects with flaring issues and the ghosting. But I mentioned that already in the first impressions video. But all in all, I promise you, this is a great, great setup. And remember, the 35 to 150 is actually the field of view of 52 to 225. That is huge. That's awesome. And you get it at F2 to f2.8 so again great setup if you're looking to move up into the world of full frame why not go ahead and get you a beast of a lens that's full frame but you can still use it on your APS-C bodies right now so as you get more and more money coming in from your work and you build up to those other cameras you can still use it on this and you get great performance and great reliability out of this lens on these cameras so guys i hope this helped out somebody out there because i've gotten several dms about this specific setup so yes here's the video hopefully it helped you out hopefully you'll make a better decision on something like this and maybe i've, I've triggered some thoughts on something that you find uh, 
interesting that maybe you have to think about a little bit further before you actually go ahead and get this lens. But I promise you, if you do get it, the pros far outweigh the cons. And as I've mentioned, there's not that many cons. But guys, till next time, get the gear that's right for you because only you can do your projects. But since we usually only have one chance to get it right, why not do it right and just do it once? Till next time, guys, we'll see you in the next video.